Oh, wow. <laughs> Hello, thank you for letting me be here. First, um, let's get into a little anecdote. Um, when I was younger, I still went to high school. It's quite a lot of years back now. <laughs> Not really, but um, when we had a group of friends, and whenever something exciting happened to any of us, one of us would talk for, let's say, three, four, five minutes. Let's say there was a crazy party and somebody made out with someone and it went into this super long ramble about how it happened and all the details. And whenever it would turn into this long rant, it would be like, thank you for listening to my TED Talk. We would always finish by saying that. And uh, well, what can I say? <laughs> I would also always say that and now I can say I'm having an actual TEDx talk about my life and um, it's very exciting. So what is this talk going to contain? As you can see, I'm kind of naked. I don't have those nice pointy uh, pointer fingers and no uh, PowerPoint presentation for you. Because this is going to be very personal, I haven't, I'm a public person, as you can expect from an influencer and online persona. And uh, the things I'm going to share with you, they're very close and dear to me. And I haven't shared some of those aspects with anyone so far. And I hope you can get something out of it for yourself. So let's start with the three pivotal moments of my life. It started when I was 17 and uh, I decided to move out. I noticed I didn't enjoy living with my parents and I wanted to do my own thing. So I packed my bags one night and moved out. I got a job as a waitress and I worked till 3 a.m. every night to wake up at 6 a.m. three hours later and go to high school to finish my high school degree. Now, I always got this question, why are you making it so hard on yourself, Anna? Like, you could just stay at home. Yeah, you might argue with your parents every now and then, but you would still have the comfort and you wouldn't have to do all these very exhausting tasks and work already. And I always said, it just doesn't feel right to just choose the easy path. And that's like the main takeaway of this first moment for me is what I wanted to share with you, is that very often we're faced with decisions and there's always this path of, least resistance, and then there's the path that's going to be harder for every single one of us. And if we're able to then come into our power and be like, okay, yes, I'd much rather stay on the couch and eat a bag of chips instead of be like, I'm gonna trick my butt up and go to the gym. And if we continue to make these harder decisions, the growth we'll experience and the person we're going to become is going to be much bigger than anything we've ever experienced. Now, let's go to one of the mistakes, I would say, that isn't ever really a mistake. But when I finished my high school diploma, I decided to do what everyone else told me I should do, uh, start studying. Now, I had no idea what I wanted to do, so I moved to Vienna and I listened to my parents and they were like, you're so good at languages, you should just study languages. And I remember the first 10 minutes of sitting in, at university, I was instantly bored and I knew <laughs> I could not handle that, and it felt so wrong. But I just moved, I spent all this money moving in, like I had just worked three months in Canada as an intern, and all the money I spent, I invested in moving to Vienna. And how do you explain your parents that helped you move? I'm like, mom, it's my first day here, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave, I don't like it here. <laughs> so I didn't do that, and I told myself, I listened to the logic part of my brain, that I should just push through and do what everyone tells me to do. And I got very depressed. I got to a stage only two months in where I felt like I no longer wanted to live. And it was very, very hard and uncomfortable, obviously. And yeah, it's still hard to talk about that. But out of that comes the biggest and most important lesson that's for me changed the entire way I look at life. And if you remember the movie Matrix, I hope you've all seen it, there's this scene where there's the blue pill and the red pill. And I got exactly to that moment where I knew I had the choice. I either choose to live or I choose the opposite. And in my case, this moment just of being there and realizing I'm consciously choosing life right now was a complete game changer. And it led for me to step in and be like, okay, if I'm choosing to live my life now and not choosing suicide, I will do it the way I want to. And when that moment came, I was like, who cares what my parents think, what anybody else thinks? I sold my laptop that day. I bought a plane ticket to Hawaii. 
I, <laughs> sounds, everyone when I tell it, they're like, this isn't real, right? This is like a story. It's real. I sold my laptop, I bought a used tent and sleeping bag for 25 bucks on Wilhaben. It's like an Austrian used um, stuff website. And I got my flip-flops. It was January, by the way, it was snowing. And I got flip-flops, <laughs> two dresses, and the tent and the sleeping bag took up all my space in the backpack. And I flew three days, I slept on the beaches, and not on the beaches, that was later. I slept on the airports because I took the absolute worst connection you could think. And I landed on Hawaii and I was surprised because Honolulu, I landed on Oahu, is a huge city with three million inhabitants. And I thought it was just going to beach, be beaches and palm trees. Well, I was wrong. And I booked myself one night at a hostel for 40 euros, which was so expensive in my eyes because I only had 300 euros for a two-month trip. And what did I do? I was terrified. I again felt like I was going to die. And I, well, figured after the night I've spent there, I just started sleeping on beaches. And of course, the first night I really had the worst night's sleep ever. But I kind of got used to it. I met some other people that were crazy like me and like kind of the homeless youth of Hawaii. And that, <laughs> that was a great experience because whoever knows what it's actually like to be homeless. And I've there's a difference if you're choosing to be homeless or if it just kind of happens. So I know there's a distinct difference. But that really, I can't sum that experience up, but the main takeaway here again was that I realized I can handle so much more than I ever thought and that I can trust myself to, to, to handle these tough situations and that I didn't need anyone else to tell me what to do and what not to do because, of course, my parents were freaking out the entire time. And um, yeah, it was, it was eye-opening. And after that experience, I came back. I continued um, to just work and started studying business and management, which I would never have started studying business, ma business, and, business and management because, of course, there's a lot of finance, and I sucked at math. I sucked very, very much at math, so much that anyone would always say, like, Anna, mm, no, just don't even think about it. But after Hawaii, I was like, well, if I manage to survive that, I'm sure going to figure out a way to manage to study that. And well, I finished studying. And uh, the middle thing that happened when it comes to now social media is uh, after three semesters, again, I had this feeling, always wanted to be an actress. So I decided to fly to LA, <laughs> sell all my things. <laughs> and I flew all the way across the country to LA, to Hollywood. And I spent three months there. Um, I got an agent, I was photographed by the top photographer, and I paid for it, you know, it's not like they saw me and they were like, oh my god, I gotta photograph you, <laughs> you're amazing. No, they were like, pay me 800 euros for two photos. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, but I paid for that and that got me an agent and I was, I was excited, I was like, I'm in Hollywood, I have an acting agent, I'm gonna be famous. <laughs> and, uh, well, that didn't happen. Um, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> I got an agent and um, I soon figured out, they told me that if I want to work as an actress in the US, I have to showcase that I'm already famous and very successful in Austria. Now that meant I had to have a trophy, like an award, an actual award. I had to make like a good 100k a year already from acting and I really basically had to be Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> just to <laughs> somehow get a chance to be accepted. So I was heartbroken, I realized I had no chance, I was a nobody at this point, and nobody even really knew who I was in Austria. Just, yeah, so I moved, uh, yeah, no, before that, I was in LA on the beach, and as I always did, I watched YouTube videos to kind of calm myself. I would also always watch TEDx talks. And I found a video of somebody making fun of this new platform, TikTok. It was just like him saying it's the most cringe thing ever, and I downloaded it, of course. <laughs> <And> <laughs> That's when I realized, okay, I said to myself, you're going to upload three videos, and if one of them is going to get a moderate amount of attention, then maybe you should just give it a shot. And I uploaded a video of my double chin. Very embarrassing, I think it's still on there. And it got 3,000 views. And yes, I thought that was incredible. <laughs> 
And uh, that's when I decided, moving back to Austria, continued studying, got a job uh, as a receptionist, and uploaded every single evening the most incredibly embarrassing videos online. And well, I did that every single day. And here I am today. The platform grew incredibly. It grew with me. I felt like I was one of the godfathers because in Austria, nobody knew what this platform was. And um, yeah, it's insane. And if people ask me how I make money, it's, um, <laughs> well, <laughs> there's, a lot, there's a lot that goes into it. A lot of people know nowadays that influencers make money. But how it works is um, I will get a product let's say a company reaches out and they're like, hey, we have this new smartphone, it's amazing, can you promote it? I will first of all check if I'm kind of ethically, feel like it's, it's a good company and I, and I connect with them. And then I will just try and authentically and organically as possible because there is a difference now between traditional advertisement and new advertisement. And if you've noticed, the younger generation isn't much into TVs. I don't, I don't own a TV. And I think we're mostly getting bored of the traditional media that's like, buy this, it's the best product, like the most amazing product you've ever seen. Like we're all tired of that. So what's happening now with, with the new generation and me coming in as like this content creator now is that I am able to promote these products in an organic way that doesn't feel so much like a typical advertisement. And companies pay me for that because I have a certain amount of reach now at this point. It's like a TV channel that people click into. Sometimes I still feel like I have to explain social media. Like, <laughs> it's not that like everybody understands it. Um, and yeah, that's how I make money. And um, that's how I grew it into a six-figure business, actually. And I'm very proud because it's not, you know, it's not something I ever thought was possible. And so many people told me along the way, what are you doing? It's the most, uh, so cringe. And if I watched that, like, I would melt into the floor. And I, and I get that. But now, you know, just a year later, I've gotten so many messages. And it really shows that in the end, if you're doing something you're, you love, it will lead to something. And if you also don't let yourself be stopped, and you choose life, and you, you follow that, what's really inside of you, and yeah, that's, that's what I wanted to share with you. I'm glad I was able to, and now thank you for listening to my TEDx talk. <laughs>